and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage Sponks. Yeah, you say hi too. Today, I have a very exciting sewing project for you guys. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous to make this one, but I think I can accomplish it through all the skills that I've been developing over the past year or so. I mean, I've been sewing longer than that, but I feel like my skills have really been on point for the last year. So first we'll talk about pattern. I am going to make the princess coat by Gertie. The coat on the cover is the coat I wanna make. I am not sure I have enough wool for this because I got this wool second hand. So I might have to deviate and do a coat that's more like a blazer with a peplum. We will see as we go. You will find out in this journey what coat we end up being able to do. But yeah, this is the pattern. I'm not gonna lie, I'm also a little bit nervous because this is the instruction book for the pattern. And I've never seen an instruction book that is this thick. Granted, I've only ever really been sewing with 1940s, 50s, and 70s patterns. Maybe modern patterns just have more instructions, and a lot of these will be things that I know how to do intuitively. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of curious how that works. Oh, I didn't see, and then it looks like it's some tissue paper. Oh, wow, how am I supposed to know where I'm cutting? There's a lot of sizes in here. But yeah, no, this will just, this will be interesting. I'm hoping to learn a lot. I know Gertie is known for helping people learn to sew, so I'm hoping it's less intimidating than it looks. Spooky's sitting on my fabric right now, so I have to real quick move her so I can show you the fabric. Spunks, I know, it's so hard to be you. For fabrics, oh, this wool is heavy. There's a lot of it. I know this is a thick stack, but the little tag I put on it says it's only four yards, which kind of seems wild to me. This is wool I picked up several years ago at my favorite Creative Reuse store, which is like a thrift store for crafts. Seattle Recreative. It's this beautiful wool. It has like, hopefully you can see that, like these little kind of subtle stripes. It's very pinky and purpley and pretty. I picked this up for probably $2 a yard, which is pretty neat. And then for the lining, I picked this up recently at a fabric store in Colorado called, I think it's called Allen's. It is a static, like a static resistant polyester taffeta lighting. I think this will work. I hope it'll add some structure into the coat on top of all the interfacing I'll be cutting for the coat. But I am excited to get started and learn with this. First, before I do anything else, I am going to make a mock-up of just the bodice area to make sure everything's looking good there. So we're gonna jump into that right now. To start this project off, I'm trying to figure out exactly what pieces I need. I'm not used to a pattern with this many different versions, so this took a little bit of like thinking. I was gonna say math, but math is not the right term. And then once I figured out what pieces I need, I'm just like vaguely cutting them out. I'm not cutting them out precisely yet because I don't know what size I need. I'm just trying to cut around all the pieces I need so I can fold up the sheets of the pieces I don't and put them away and not have to think about them anymore. Once I have them all vaguely cut out, I've identified the pieces I need to make a mock-up to make sure it's gonna fit and I am first starting by tracing those pattern pieces because obviously I don't want to cut these out till I'm sure it's the size I want. I mean I know best practice is just to trace all of your pieces but I do not have like the ability to do so without hurting my back too much so I have decided to not opt out. And then now I am cutting out my pieces in this is leftover fabric from my Snow Queen gunny sacks look. This is, I think, a poplin that I really don't like. I shouldn't have chosen this for a mock-up because it wasn't fun to sew, but it was just what I had laying around, so it's what I used. So here is my mock-up. It's looking overall pretty good. I'm probably gonna shorten the sleeve by like an inch. That looks about right here. Uh, I have a decent range of motion here. However, if I was to pin it, this is just a little bit tighter than I want. So I actually think I'm gonna go ahead. I cut it, I mounted it up in a size four. I feel like overall the proportions look really good. Like everything to me is sitting correctly. It's just all a tiny bit too small. And I'm just gonna go up a size because I want to be able to wear sweaters under this coat. This is probably an example of a bulkier thing I would wear at the waistline, but I think overall it will just be more useful and comfy and like longer longevity coat, I guess, if I go up a size. So I'm going to go ahead and work on cutting out the size six. I think that should do the trick and then I will probably need to draft the sleeve pattern so I can take this inch of length out, which will be pretty easy. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. This took a really long time 
time. I think I'm almost like four hours in and all I have is this mock-up. So yeah, I'm gonna work on now cutting out all gajillion of these pattern pieces and then we will be going from there once that's done. And after all that prep work, I finally was able to cut out my pattern pieces and now I am ready to cut them out in the fabric. So I am just laying them out. The fabric for this is kind of tight. I technically don't have enough, so I'm gonna have a few things that I'm cutting a little bit off grain, but they'll be reinforced with interfacing, so it should be okay that they're a little bit off grain. But yeah, I'm just basically making sure that things very precisely fit and pieces will work because yeah, definitely running on a little bit of limited fabric. So looking at my spreadsheet, the prep work for this, everything I did today took seven and a half hours, which is so long of doing a lot of the prep work and stuff that I don't enjoy. So I will be ready for when this is done. The other thing you can see here is I knew I needed to shorten the sleeve a little bit, so I actually traced the pattern and then shortened it on my traced copy because I didn't wanna permanently alter the pattern. Because I just had to do this for the sleeves, I was willing to put in the work of tracing the pattern. All right, good morning. It is about 10.15, so that is when we're starting today, I guess. Actually, probably more like 10.30 because I have to feed Spooky. Yesterday was long. I am not particularly energized or excited about this project right now because yesterday I spent six and a half hours cutting out pattern pieces and material. And as you guys know, that's my least favorite part and I'm probably only halfway through cutting. So I'm just feeling a little bit exhausted, a little bit defeated. And honestly, like my back pain is pretty not great right now. So yeah, I kind of feel like today I need to get through cutting my interfacing and then I'm not gonna cut the lining until probably tomorrow. I'm doing this on a three-day weekend, which was a vast underestimation by me, but I, I don't think I can finish it this weekend. I wanted to finish it in time for my trip to Korea. That's not gonna happen, which is okay. I This coat was like a nice to have for that trip. I have lots of other coats that I like, so that's totally fine. I'm just, yeah, I'm definitely feeling a little bit defeated and discouraged right now and tired. So yeah, that is kind of where I'm at. I think it will start feeling better once I start so so that mock-up I did yesterday only took about an hour out of the seven and a half hours I sewed for. The sewing doesn't take that long. I just need to get to the point that I'm sewing because yeah, I, I hate cutting out fabric and I'm just sick of cutting out fabric and I'm looking at all the pattern pieces. They're right under the camera on a chair and I am not feeling excited. So yeah, I think I just got to get through it and then we'll get to the good part. I did quite a bit of uh, theragunning on my back last night to try to get it ready for another full day, but we're just gonna, I'm gonna kind of just see health wise what I can do versus what I can't. That's just part of having the back stuff that I have. Sometimes I can't do things for as long as I want to. I anticipate today probably being more like a six hour day because A, I'm starting like an hour later. And then I am also needing to run some errands I need to go pick up. I'm very excited for a really beautiful gunny sacks that I purchased. And I also want to go pick up bubble tea. My goal is to cut out the interfacing and then go get the stress and bubble tea as a reward for cutting out the interfacing. I do have to kind of figure out what I'm doing for the interfacing because I'm not sure I have enough interfacing that's like of the same type. So yeah, I'll have to figure that out, but we'll get there. We'll all be okay. So. With that, we're gonna go ahead and jump into cutting the interfacing. And now I'm getting so close to be able to start sewing. The last thing I'm cutting, this is all interfacing. This was also a little bit tricky because I don't actually have enough of this interfacing and I'm unwilling to wait for more to come in. So I did end up patching the two curved pieces along the hem. I think it'll be okay if those are patched there because they're just kind of a reinforcement. They're like not as integral to the structure of the coat. And it's already lunch time by the time I finish cutting that out. So I am real quick trying to eat a healthy shrimp tacos lunch. This recipe is delicious. It's by Budget Bite and I'll link it down below. I really, really liked this one. I did sub, I think it's regular jalapenos for pickled jalapenos because I love a pickle. Yeah, definitely. Again, we take care of ourselves when we sew and part of that is fueling our body. The first step here is ironing on the interfacing. The way this interfacing needs to be ironed on is with a completely dry iron on fairly high heat and you basically don't wiggle the iron when you move it around which is why you can see all these iron prints. By the time you are done with the coat you have ironed this enough other times that those iron marks won't show as firmly as they usually do. And now I am prepping for my bound buttonholes. I have actually never had instruction 
instructions tell me how to do bound buttonholes like this and the fact that it is just a straight up strip is kind of genius because you don't have to worry about as many little edges popping up. So I thought that was kind of a neat new trick I learned on this pattern. And as usual, I am sewing around the rectangle counting stitches to make sure all the buttonholes are exactly the same size. And then I'm cutting open these buttonholes with some really sharp shears to be ready to turn them inside out. And then I'm turning these around and getting them ready to sew. So I'm making sure everything is lying flat after I've cut them apart. And then what's really nice about this fabric is it actually hides but bound buttonholes mistakes really, really well. So I feel very fortunate for that fact because it is way less horrifying. And then here I am prepping these darts to be ready to sew. These are kind of the weird darts on the collar that I think help it lay flat in the correct way you want. And then I am pressing those flat. Wool is really, really, really nice to press because it just kind of like smushes down. It is really wonderful to work with, especially with the iron. And then for the princess seam, the instructions tell you to basically clip the curve before you sew. I haven't seen this before and it was really interesting. It definitely worked pretty well. I don't think it's always necessary, but it definitely did help make the princess seam a little bit more curved with less like weird wrinkled bunches. And here I have sewn the collar together and what you can see here, the white interfacing strip, I am pressing that. That will help the collar like stand up and structure correctly, which I'm trying to kind of show you here. I hadn't really seen a technique like this before and I think it's really interesting and quite clever. And then here I am sewing more princess seams. Again, using the same method that I used earlier. And then with the back all sewn up, I am adding in the support piece that the pattern has you cut off and put in. I just used some scrap, kind of like thicker upholstery fabric for this because I figured it would hold the weight and structure that this piece is designed to hold. Again, I, I'm new to coat making, so I found this quite a clever solution for adding some additional structure, especially since in the back, it's pretty easy for weight to get kind of heavy there and drag stuff down. So it makes sense to me that you're using like a stiffer piece of fabric than the kind of like mushy wool to keep everything upright. And here I am just going ahead and sewing that down. And it is also time to sew up the side seams and the shoulder seams, so we have a not complete bodice, but closer to complete bodice. Good morning, folks. So I'm feeling much better about this project today. Here is what I got done yesterday. We have a full on bodice. Uh, it's looking really nice. I'm really enjoying sewing with the wool. Pressing wool is delightful. Highly recommend. I also put on this dress that I haven't put on in a while and wow, it is so gorgeous. That is the update I guess for today. Today my goal is to sew from about now until about four. So that'll be probably like five hours with breaks. Yesterday I sewed four. Um, we're just going to kind of see where we get. I was going to cut lining first thing this morning, but honestly, I feel like I need to continue to sew because sewing has made me feel better about this project. <laughs> so I'm going to just keep on sewing. I'm going to work on the sleeves, the skirt, uh, and then I'll cut the lining when I get to when you have to sew the skirt together. You're supposed to put the pockets in, which are a lining fabric. So I'll cut that then. So I do expect to do some cutting today. I just want to put it off for a little because I'm so sick of cutting fabric. I think that's why I was feeling just like not so great about this project is like after like seven hours of prep and cutting and stuff I just like wanted to sew. That's kind of where we're at. I am not showing you as detailed step by step through this because this is another YouTube creator's like intellectual property and I you should buy the pattern if you want to make this pattern and also in this case like I feel like I show you such detailed stuff for like 1940s and 50s patterns because they don't explicitly lay out what exactly you're supposed to be doing in them. This Gertie pattern is very precise in exactly what you should be doing every single step. So I don't feel like there's a similar issue there. So that is why you're seeing just a less detailed walk through this project in general. Also this project we're already at like over 12 hours and usually that's about where a project ends and I would say I might be halfway through at this point on hours but we'll see I kind of doubt that so yeah that that's just the reason this isn't as in-depth um and honestly you'll find videos from her that are way more informative I just kind of wanted to make this pattern I'll give you my final thoughts on the pattern when it's done oh are we gonna come say hi come here so yeah, that is kind of what's going on here. And then uh, today I do plan on, I need to film a reveal for a different project. That's actually why I am so dressed up, is I need to film this reveal. Hi, Spunks. 
So I'm gonna do that, but other than that, I don't really have anything on my agenda but sewing. And I do have to actually make my lunch today because I have run out of meal prep. You're giving the, the camera a lot of butt. Okay. That is kind of what's on the plan for today. I'm now thinking with everything else I have going on, we're looking at probably just four hours of sewing, which is totally fine. Honestly, that seems to be working better for me. I again fair gunned my back last night and this morning to hopefully be able to continue through and pushing through. And don't worry, I am not pushing past the boundaries of my health. I'm just working with it. I don't always talk. I push through every project like this. I don't always talk about my, I guess, like chronic pain stuff on here just because like... I don't really like to complain that much about it. Um, it is something that impacts every single day of my life. I guess like honestly, if I'm completely truthful about it, I've learned that able-bodied people don't really wanna hear about all the pains and a lot of times able-bodied people think you're making up the fact you're in pain all the time. So I just like opt not to talk about it that often. But yeah, I do like to, I don't know, I've gotten a few comments about me being lazy on a few videos and I just wanna kind of like remind you guys that like sewing is painful for me. So, <laughs> you know, I'm doing the best that I can and there are things that I could do a bit differently or maybe better, but I have only so many hours in the day that I can actually physically bear sewing. And so as a result, I have to be like a little bit choosy about what I give my 100% to versus what I half-ass a little. So that's just the, the truth of it. I'm sorry for that little mini rant. It's just been kind of on my mind. Keep your ableist nonsense about laziness out of here. I don't believe any content creator is lazy because content creation is a whole lot of work. And also you don't know what somebody's going through. You don't know what their actual physical limits are. Most people wouldn't look at me and guess that I'm fairly constantly in pain. So, you know, uh, you can't always tell who actually is struggling with things like that. So that's just, I guess, a reminder for that. Sorry for that little rant. I just, this is a channel where I speak my truth and I'm authentic and that is authentically on my mind right now. But let's go ahead and hop into sewing. Ah, oh, Jesus, that was a long check-in. Since I'm a little bit fresher this morning, I thought it was a good time to do some of the other bits that I don't always enjoy, which is putting on the interfacing here. I felt like I had done enough sewing that interests me the previous day that I could now do a boring task again. And then here I am prepping both the sleeves and the skirt at the same time, just starting to get things sewn together. Both the sleeves and the skirt have a bunch of steps of sewing them together, so I decided to just work on them simultaneously. I felt like that would be easier. And then with my ever faithful cat beside me, I am going ahead and I am sewing all of these gajillions of seams. And for a trickier part that I did not like doing, I am sewing the facing to the sleeve. This opening is so small that it was very fiddly with my sewing machine, especially by the time you have everything attached just not very fun to do. And then of course another step is prepping the facing part of the bound buttonholes. They tell you here to use silk organza. I just went ahead and used the interfacing because I don't have any organza on hand and I felt like this worked well enough and was similar enough to the way organza worked, especially once I ironed it down because obviously that pasted everything in place. And then here I am sewing the top facing to like the skirt front facing as the directions tell me to do. And then I am also pinning together the top of the balloon sleeve to the bottom of the balloon sleeve. And while sewing these, I thought it was a good time to put the basting stitches into the head of the sleeve. And I have finally hit a point where I can't go any further in the project without doing more cuttings. So I'm finally cutting the lining. I bought way too much lining fabric. I didn't need that much which is always great because it is very useful to have lining fabric just kind of sitting around in a couple different colors. And this is a color I definitely don't have sitting in my stash. And while you watch this footage of me cutting, this is my reminder that if you enjoy my videos, you can send me a tip over on Ko-Fi. I just always really appreciate it. It helps me run my channel and do what I do. So definitely, if you feel the desire, I have that link down in the description. And then here I am putting in the sleeve and pinning it. The sleeve head here is like eased and not gathered, and that's a little bit different for me. Most patterns I use, the sleeve is gathered. So here I am taking my time, putting the sleeve in, making sure that I don't have any unnecessary pleats and tucks and stuff like that that can come from like a more gathered sleeve style. And this is the step I couldn't go any further without working with lining fabric. I needed the lining fabric for the pockets, which I am pinning in place here. The pockets here are going in pretty close to how normal pockets do, where you sew 
the three eighths of an inch seam and then later when you pin them together you sew that five eighth seam so the pockets are pretty like in there and not super visible from the outside which is what you are seeing me pinning for here and that happens when you pin the skirt front to the skirt back because you have side pockets and here i am also tackling the hem facing and then this is the last step I'm doing before my trip, which is sewing all those seams I just pinned. Sewing the pocket seams are always just interesting because it's kind of weird to go from that thick wool to that thin satin material in like one stitching line. It's just always, I don't know, interesting because they're completely different fabrics to sew with. Alrighty, so it's been a long time since I've worked on this coat. It's been almost three weeks, but I'm ready to dive back in. I planned on diving in the day after I got back from Korea, but jet lag has been really rough and I've also been sick. I've also had some personal stuff going on, so it's been a little bit hard to get back to sewing, but I'm finally doing it. I have... I don't know, I don't have that much time to finish this. I would really like to get it done sooner rather than later because I have a big project I'd like to do at the end of this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into it today and into tonight. You're gonna see some night footage, which is always lit really poorly and I apologize for that. It is what it is. It is 4.30, so it's about to start getting dark when I'm starting this and basically my plan is just to get as far as I can today. I'm not gonna do any more check-ins until the reveal just because I think I can finish this up. Basically I have to attach the skirt part to the bodice, then I have to attach the facing, and then I have to sew the lining and attach the lining. So I still have a lot to do. We're gonna start. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be good, hopefully. But yeah, I'm finally feeling almost 100. No, I was just sick. Um, unfortunately for me, once I get one cold, I keep getting colds again and again and again as long as I'm exposed. And now with us not masking and people now like going to work sick i'm just getting sick more often and traveling and stuff like that it just sort of is what it is but it definitely slows down my sewing and my whole entire life so i'm hoping after i get better from this cold i can maybe go without getting sick for at least like four or five weeks this time instead of just three we'll see but let's go ahead and hop into the sewing so now i'm finally back to it my first step here is attaching the bodice to the skirt it kind of feels silly that I didn't do this step before I left, but I just didn't have the time or the energy to do it, so I'm doing it now. It's just definitely would have been easier to hang this all on a hanger as opposed to have the separate pieces floating around my house while I was out. And then here I'm finally sewing the facing to the coat. This facing goes all the way around the entire coat, so it is around the collar, around the skirt front, but then it also includes that skirt hem. I feel like it's hard to show you guys how truly like big these two pieces going together is like it was a lot to manage on my sewing machine and it was kind of a journey to work with. And then once those are sewn together, the next step is clipping seams and then doing something called grading. I couldn't figure out what the instructions meant by this, but basically grading a seam is when you cut down one seam to be like the seam allowance to be shorter than the other seam. So that way when you do your understitching, it helps lend itself a little bit better to that folding and rolling of the seam. This is actually a really important step. It might be tempting to skip it because it's not very fun to do, but don't skip it. And the instructions on this clarify that on the collar you have the grading one way and then the rest of the coat you have the grading the opposite direction. And then here I'm working on the understitching. This is so important. Do not skip this set on a coat or your coat will not roll properly and it's going to look super sloppy and messy. It's a pain in the butt of a step to do, but I promise it will make such a big difference on your coat. I mean, I would say it definitely will make a lot of differences on all of your projects, but you absolutely cannot skip it on a structured garment like a coat that has this thickness to it because the seam will roll and it will look sloppy and bad, even though it's a huge pain and I hated every moment of doing it. And then here I am the next morning, I'm just basically powering through doing the lining. The lining basically is the same steps as the coat assembly, so I'm not gonna really show you anything. It's basically, yeah, doing the same thing with more slippery fabric, and I guess two weeks later, while jet lagged. I had at least done it one time, so it was a little less hard to do it the second time. This amused me because I felt like pinning the facing to the coat felt like a big job, but somehow this felt even bigger and more bulky and awkward, but here I am pinning all the way around the coat. For where the lining goes, the lining actually attaches to the facing. This is a step that I did wrong on a recent project, I think on the cape. I figured out what it meant on the cape and I did it wrong, so that way I could do it right on this coat, which was a much harder piece to make and I am pleased that I did it correctly. 
And then I am again sewing all the way around the whole coat, this time sewing the lining to the wool. And then sorry, you can't really see what's happening here, but I am under stitching actually the facing and the lining. This will first of all give it extra security because now there's two lines of stitching holding this together, but also it will make sure the lining rolls the way it should. The instructions didn't tell me to do this, but I felt like it was an easy step to keep a cleaner coat inside. So that is why I did it. And then it makes sure that yeah, everything's pressed the right way permanently. And I just feel like I'm gonna get less weird bulky and seam rolling because I did this. And then here I am doing the rolled hem on the jacket lining. So they say to do this before you attach the lining at all. I don't disagree with that, but I felt like I wanted to have the lining hang in the coat overnight so I could be totally sure that nothing was gonna hang below the hem of the coat and show the lining on the outside. So I waited until I had actually installed the lining. Even though it was against their directions, I felt like this worked well for me because there were a couple places that I had to thin the lining a little bit. Here I am actually using, a lot of you are always mystified that I'm not using my hem like double roll foot. I don't like how these work. I did it for this because it's such a big skirt and if I had to sew this twice I would have screamed at this point. I'm not gonna lie I was so over this project at this point and I just wanted it to be done already. The reason I don't use this foot this often is I just don't think you can get it as clean as if you do a double turn hem yourself. Maybe other people can but I can't and I only feel really like it does a good job with a thin lining fabric like this. And even then there's like a lot of weird wrinkling and stuff that doesn't happen if I manually do a double turn hem than if I use the foot. It takes me so long to feed this properly through a rolling hem that in most cases it won't save me time. However, here again, I felt like it saved me time just because this was such a ginormous hem. And again, I just, I want it to be done at this point. And now we're getting to the exciting touches like sewing on the buttons. These were some vintage buttons that I bought specifically for this project. I felt like they would look nice with it. Honestly, I had a really hard time finding buttons in the correct size that I actually liked with this coat. Like these were probably not my ideal, but they did the trick. Um, and then the other really stupid thing I did here is, so I had just, I had done basically tailor stitching with these stitches. And then I just like pulled them all out of the jacket as I sewed because I'm so habitual about pulling out loose threads. So I had to remark these again. Sometimes we do silly, goofy, annoying things and not ideal, but life happens. This, I had so much hand sewing to do with. I kind of didn't expect this project to be as hand sewing heavy, but here they have you do, instead of like the slip stitch, they have you do a stitch where you basically back stitch every time you go and you make all these little X's along the hem. I, it obviously makes sense for a heavier hem like this, but I didn't really enjoy that because I felt like I couldn't go as fast and this was such a long hem. I just felt like this took me forever. And just to be clear, Spooky was on my lap with the coat over her for all those other hand sewing scenes, but here I am just sewing the sleeve so I don't have the coat covering her entire body. She is such an insistent cuddler and sometimes that means she has to deal with my projects completely covering her which she probably likes since she likes to sleep under the covers anyway but I just thought this was funny. Here just a simple slip stitch and this took no time at all because the hems of the sleeves were super tiny. And then this was another thing that I did wrong on the cape instead of actually like completely tacking it down you should make these little strings that you just do by doing basically slip knots over and over and over again to make kind of like a longer, thicker thread string. This just lets the lining stay in place, but also lets the lining have enough flexibility that you don't get any weird crinkles in your jacket. So this worked well for this. Actually, the cape, it worked out fine because the cape was so short and the seams were direct. There weren't all these like curvy, shapey seams, but with something like this, definitely do these. You can find a tutorial for how to do these plenty of places on YouTube. And honestly, I think doing these are kind of fun. They remind me of like my friendship making bracelet days. And now we're giving this one final press before I wrap it up. I am so ready to be done with this project and so ready to show you the reveal. I absolutely adore this coat and I can't wait for you to see it.
All right, you have seen the reveal. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, nothing weird happened this time for my real life, don't think. Other than it was really nice to not feel super freezing while doing it like I usually do in the winter. However, let's go ahead and start by jumping into my spreadsheet of my cost breakdown of things. My fabric in total was $62.88. That is not bad at all. And a big part of that is because I bought the wool secondhand. I used interfacing and lining, which was actually the bulk of the expense. And then the notions were $20.45 because I went through a lot of thread. I think I went through like three or four spools of thread for this project, pretty wild. And then the buttons, the buttons were $12. The pattern was $23.95 because I bought it on Black Friday. So I think it was a little cheaper than it normally is. And that brings us to supply total of $107.28. I am very happy having spent that on this coat. I think that is a fantastic deal because this coat is stunning and I really love it and coats in general are around that price. So I, I'm pleased. Let's real quick hop into the labor. This took me 27 hours and 15 minutes to make. I knew a coat would take a while. I had no idea it would take this long. This feels really, really, really long. A lot of it was the amount of hand sewing I did, but I just feel like it was just like a lot of pieces. And then the instruction booklet was kind of intimidating. And so I kind of, I just, I felt like there was a lot going on with this one. But if you multiply that by $32.70, which is the like living wage rate in Seattle, which I think comes out at about 68 or 70 a year, like 70K, uh, which is yeah, about what it takes to live in Seattle. And I, if I was going to be paying a seamstress for this, I would want them to make a living wage. I think living wages are really important. And most seamstresses do not make a living wage and are in really, really terrible working conditions. So that is why I do this little calculation at the end. So the labor total for this is $891.08. Again, if I was making a living wage, that brings us to a grand total of $998.36, which is really high. This is like definitely like the most expensive thing I've ever made, I think. Again, like the coat itself actually wasn't that expensive. I've definitely made dresses that are more expensive, but the labor that went into this is what really adds to that cost. I just think that's like definitely something to think of when you're picking up a coat for like 50, 60 bucks. Seamstress that made that is getting paid pennies. My camera died in the middle of that thought. So I'm sure it was just about everybody should get a living wage. But let's wrap up talking about this coat that I absolutely adore. I love this coat. I will talk about, I guess, like downsides first. Oh, Jesus. Downsides. I, I don't think like this is the best coat I'll ever make. It was my first coat. This is the first thing in a while where I, I think A, I was really like pushing my sewing skills, but um, yeah, you're being silly. You chose to be up here. Oh, I know it's so hard to be you. Come on, oh, Jesus Christ, don't vomit on me. Oh, you wanna sit on my microphone? All right, Spooky is joining us. I've just got home from work, so she needs attention. This is the first thing I've sewn in a while that I'm not just like so excited about my sewing skills, but it was really, really complex. So I think that's totally okay. And that is also why I made my first coat with that upcycled wool that I got at a resale shop instead of like using like brand new $20 a yard wool. So when I make my next version of this coat, I will for sure, I think do a better job. And I will also be purchasing some more expensive wool. I really want a blue version that has a hood. I really wish this coat had a hood. And I just now discovered there's a pattern expansion for a hood. Honestly, I don't think I had the fabric in this project for it, but I do still wish I knew beforehand because with Seattle, I like to have a hood on my jacket. The other, the second and only other critique of this jacket for me, and it's not even that there's something I would like nitpick about the way this jacket is made. I just think like I could do it better, you know? Um, I think next time I sew it, I'll probably add in some shoulder pads. I actually think that is really good in a coat for me, but I definitely sewed the right size and all that. The other downside of this coat is I think next time I make a coat like this, I'm actually gonna add, I think it's fleece interfacing. There's something you can add into wool that makes it even warmer than just the wool. This jacket, while it is nice and pretty warm, it is not warm enough for how cold it is currently in Seattle. I think it snowed last night or hailed or I don't know, it was doing some wacky weather. So it's a bit chilly and I definitely don't feel like this coat kept me as warm as some of my other coats. So I think I just need to uh, add that extra like layer of lining. So I'll be looking into that for the next time I make a coat. Yeah, I'll make it with a hood. But as far as things I did well, I made a whole coat. And the upside to this coat is I love it. I feel girly, I feel pretty, I feel I feel like myself in this coat. Like this is the first coat I've worn besides like the other coat that I made that was like a ring coat that I feel like, I feel like it's as feminine as the way I like to dress. I have one other coat that I feel really, really good in, but it's, tight on the arms these days and 
this coat will probably replace that coat they're similar colors but yeah no this is for sure i just i feel pretty in this coat not to go on a negative but i do think this coat needs a few buttons down the front that go just past the three and the pattern just because i did notice it flapping open and then every time your coat flaps open you lose that hot air that you kind of collect by wearing the coat so i think i'll add that in next time too but i'm really stoked to make this coat again and the perk of gertie's patterns and why they're so thick booklet wise like i found this pattern so intimidating because of how big the booklet of instructions was some of that is just because there's so many different versions of this pattern like she definitely does a good job of making a pattern super versatile so i definitely can see myself i think i'm gonna make a white blazer or like a white coat that's a short coat probably out of some like white wool or cream wool cream is one of my favorite like coat things like one of my favorite coat colors so I think I'll definitely make one of those with it I think the silhouette of this is gorgeous and she has like another kind of flowier sleeve option I definitely think there's a bunch of things I can do with this pattern I'm sure you'll see this pattern back on my channel and I would rate this pattern really really well so one nitpicky thing is the side this seam here the side front to back seam they were about a half inch off from each other and I checked the pattern pieces and it seems like they're off there too. So it looks like it is a pattern flaw and not just a me flaw. If you've made this pattern and if you've noticed the same thing, let me know, I'd be curious. Yeah, I like triple checked it and it's not because I did anything that I could figure out. But that would be like kind of my one critique of the pattern. And then I think it's actually good for beginners because there's so many instructions. There were maybe more instructions than I needed. I've only sewn from the vintage big four, which really assume you know a lot of sewing. So I just kind of found the amount of directions overwhelming and there were a few things that I did off the pattern I guess like that the pattern doesn't instruct you to I, I enjoy this pattern. I would highly recommend this pattern. I know it comes in a bunch of different size ranges. If you're looking for a princess coat, it's a good one to tackle. But do remember, the average dress takes me like 8 to 12 hours, and this took me 27 hours. So know that you are in for a time commitment when you make this coat. This is not something to be d d dove, dove in, d dived in dived in dived in too lightly this was definitely a lot of work and i think i'm gonna need a year before i am willing to tackle this big of a project again it was a lot it was a lot of time and i was estimating it would take me about 20 hours so i was about seven hours off and so i had to find about seven hours that i didn't plan for so yeah that is the only thing to keep in mind with this pattern and then I don't think this is a good beginner pattern. Probably have made at least like four or five garments before you hop into this one. I do think it's totally doable, especially with the amount of instructions. However, I do also think, I think she rates it as an intermediate pattern and I would agree with that. This is definitely like something that I'm glad I waited to tackle in my sewing career and didn't just hop into it. That wraps up this video. As always, I have a Ko-Fi if you feel the desire to tip me over on there. I do put a lot of time and effort into my channel and currently my videos make maybe 15 to $20. So uh, I have not been compensated for all the time and labor I do to bring you these videos. You can always support me by liking and commenting down below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love to have you around and I will see you next time. Bye.